Hi guys, alright, uh, welcome back and now we are uh, into module 3 of the Direct Access Music Production Workshop. Alright, so uh, module number 4, right, uh, it will be Introduction to Digital Audio. I have to emphasize that uh, knowledge, uh, this is going to be a very important chapter. Yes, some of this theory is going to be a little bit dry, it's going to be a little bit technical, but I think it's very, very important if you are going to be doing any sort of home recording, any sort of home music production, you need to know, right, your basics. You need to re really know the, the, the definitions and terms when you deal with digital audio, okay? Because um, mixing things up, right, and, and the mixing formats up, sample rates and all that sort of things can cause a lot of problems when you are working and collaborating with other people. It's fine if you're doing it all by yourself, right? And, and there are a lot, right? And who just blindly go. But when you start collaborating, uh, when you start working with other studios, when you start working with other engineers, other producers, then you need to be aware of all these things. Like. I've heard stories of people telling me before, you know, oh, um, I didn't know you could record in, uh, you can change, you can record in 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Because when they bought the thing, by default, they, they bought the interface, they just chuchu, -ch plug and play and just record lah. You know? So they didn't know, you know, what's the difference between 16-bit and 24-bit recording. So they were recording in 16-bit all this while. Okay, now, so let's go into digital audio. Let me talk about a little bit about it. So here we go. Now, as the name implies, digital audio uses digital signals to represent audio in a digital form. An analog signal, let's say traveling through um, from a mic cable, from a microphone to a mic cable, right? So that is converted to a digital signal at a given sampling rate and bit depth. So these are the two things that you really need to know these two terms like whenever you're handling files or sending files, right? You need to know what sampling rate you are working in, what's your project sampling rate, and what is the bit depth. These are the two very important things. So the amplitude, right? Amplitude here means right, the level right, of a digital signal at any given point is quantized, okay? Right, digital is very is very special. Right, you can always quantize. Quantize means that you can always calculate and count it down to finite number of discrete. It means there is always a very very discrete step one. It goes from one to two, two to three. You go in steps of one, for example. So resolution, okay, like when we talk about resolution, is determined by the number of bits or the bit depth. Okay, so it's these two terms we need to come to grips with. So we hear 16-bit, we hear there's 24-bit, then we hear there's 32-bit floating point, there's also 48-bit. Now, in 2020, we have already gone up to even 64-bit right, floating point uh, precision already, okay? So, here is the difference between an analog and a digital signal. So you can see, an analog signal, you can see this is like a regular sine wave, you can see it is a continuous curve, right? So that's what an analog signal is. A digital signal on the other hand is broken down, right? It's broken down into tiny, that's what we mean by discrete steps. So each single block, right, represents the waveform at, the, at that specific point. So that's what a digital signal actually is. This of course looks very raw, very rough. Okay, you can see the two is like almost not the same, but in fact, in digital, the slices are a lot much, and a lot smaller, la, okay? In fact, it's many, many, many thousands of times per second. So we will see this in the next slide very quickly. So sampling rate, okay. Some people call it sample rate. Some people call it sampling frequency, okay. So it's very simple, right? It's the number of samples per second, right? So when you are sending a, a signal, you're plugging into your audio interface and you're recording it, the, your sampling rate is how many times uh, your AD converter on your interface is capturing and sampling that sound, that signal, right? So that's basically what means sampling rate is measured in hertz, lah, okay? So that's usually the unit that's used to measure any kind of frequency or rate, okay? Now, bit depth describes the amount of data in each sample. Uh, it uses the unit bits, right? Not, don't confuse with bytes, eh? So bit rate refers to the amount of data, okay? Specifically bits transmitted or received per second. Okay, now, 
um, again, when you look at your gear, when you look at your, especially your interfaces and all that, you see all these specs, for example, dynamic range, right? So I'll cover exactly what, what dynamic range is a little bit more in depth in future. But basically in a digital system, right? Dynamic range means it's the difference in the level between what's the soft, softest, softest sound that can be encoded and what is the maximum loudest sound possible that can be uh, represented lah, by the digital signal, okay? So this is expressed in actually in dB, in decibels, okay? And dynamic range is very easy to uh, uh, determine. You multiply by 6. Magic formula, right? So for example, 16-bit audio, okay? So CD format, CD standard is 16-bit, has a dynamic range of 96 dB. So 16 times 6 is 96, right? Now, when you move up, High resolution audio is 24 bit audio onwards. So 24 bit audio has a dynamic range of, it's even greater, it's 144 dB. So immediately you can see the benefit, right, of recording in 24 bit versus 16 bit gives you 48 dB extra dynamic range already. That's huge, okay, that's a huge difference, right, between 16 bit and 24 bit. So in this day and age, please no more no 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 reason for you to still be recording in 16 bit, all right? Okay, record in 24 bit or even or even higher. Okay, now let's go on to the next slide. Okay, more scientific theory, but general knowledge, lah, okay? Now, how did the people, how did the scientists and engineers figure out those numbers are like 44.1, 44,100? Uh, hertz, 44.1 kilohertz. How did they figure out? Where did they just pluck this number out of it? So they actually have this theorem. This is called the Nikes Shannon theorem. So it states that a perfect reconstruction of a signal, okay? So let's say any kind of an analog, any audio signal, you can perfectly reconstruct it, right? When the sampling frequency, the sampling rate is greater than twice the bandwidth of the signal being sampled. I know it's very, very wordy. It's like, wow, this kind of scientific uh, uh, definition is like very, very long. But it's very simple. It basically means two times the frequency, you need double the frequency. Very easy. What's the Nyquist frequency? Okay, so Nyquist frequency is always what we call half the sample rate. As long as it exceeds the bandwidth of the signal being sampled, you can recreate it back perfectly. Before I talk about, before I go further, anyone knows the human hearing? What's the range of human hearing? Anyone knows the figure? Okay, very easy. It's 20 to 20. 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 20 cycles per second to 20 kilohertz, which is 20,000 cycles per second. Now, there is a disclaimer. La. This is for newborn babies. La. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as you grow older, right? As you grow older in age, right? Hearing always degenerates. And the first thing to go will always be the extremes, the extreme low end and the extreme high end, right? So generally speaking, as you go older, you will tend to, it's natural, you tend to lose some of the high frequencies, okay? So now, if you use a low sampling rate, what happens if your sampling rate is a bit too low, the original signal information, you can't really reconstruct it. Then you will get, all right, in a type of a distortion that's called aliasing. If you ever hear like um, very low bit rate MP3s, low quality MP3s, you know, they always have this kind of like, kind of a chirping, kind of a sound, right? If you ever hear that, okay? Maybe next week I'll try and demonstrate and I'll give you some samples of how aliasing sounds like, okay? It's usually because the sampling rate is not enough. Sometimes it can be a cool thing if you want to do some kind of a distortion or some kind of electronic effect, right? But that phenomenon is called aliasing. Okay, so to keep things simple, right? If you want to sample a signal properly, your sampling rate has to be at least minimum two times, twice or greater la, than the frequency. La. So this brings us to, okay, right, Fs equals sampling frequency, B is your signal bandwidth, 2B is your Nyquist rate, okay? <laughs> Mathematic formula, okay, right? Brings back, brings back uh, bad memories and nightmares of, of, of high school. Okay, next. So, nowadays, it's definitely gone towards a digital, digital world already. Lah. So why? There are always uh, advantages of digital versus analog. Okay, number one, first one. It's virtually noise-free, right? Virtually noise-free. Now, uh, I don't say, right, nobody says that it claims that it is noise-free because noise is always determined by sometimes your entire system, you see. 
So what comes before that, the components that come before the your mic preamp, before the AD converters, all of that will have a little bit of noise itself. But in theory, a digital system is noise-free. Okay? It does not add any noise of its own. Whatever noise that it has captured, it's always been coming from whatever um, analog components that's come before it. Okay? Now, it is, of course, economical okay? because you're dealing with um, chips, you're dealing with uh, um, um, circuit boards and all that. You're not dealing with discrete components. You're not dis de dealing with um, uh, vacuum tubes and all those kind of stuff. Right? So digital audio uh, doesn't degrade over time. And it can be argued though. Your hard disk and your, I suspect, right, your thumb drive, right, even though it's supposed to be, supposed to be, mm, won't degrade, uh, but sometimes you know, like, after a few years, uh, the thing will, <laughs> the thing will, will die and then will, it will some, will errors will start happening. On, okay, so, you know, don't believe the hype in the marketing. Lah. Now, easily transportable, obviously, okay, hard drives and hard disks is so much more easier or even pen drive or an SD card, which is so tiny, right? Is so much easier to transport in uh, compared to you know a analog tape reel. Okay, let's move on to the digital audio formats. So those are the benefits of analog versus digital. So digital audio formats. The most common formats of digital audio are PCM wave, right? The wave files are that that we always work with and we deal with. PCM here stands for pulse code modulation. AIFF, right? So uh, AIFFF is the uh, short for Apple Interchange I Apple Interchange File Format. Then you have your MP3, your WMA, which is the Windows Media something, AAC, AAC stands for Advanced Audio Codec, and then you have FLAC, FLAC. FLAC is uh, um, Free Lossless Audio Codec, okay, etc. Very important to know, okay, WAVE and AIFF are uncompressed formats, okay? So when you talk about uncompressed audio, you talk about WAVE, you talk about AIFF, we're talking about these two, okay? And uh, um, uncompressed usually means they are the high resolution, okay? Right. So these are used in professional environments, right, inside a studio. Whilst MP3, AAC, WMA, FLAC, all those are compressed formats. Those are for your consumer, those are for your end user. So, you guys, don't ever let me catch you sending me a uh, uh, mixing for mixing or something. Say MP3, it's like, ayo, okay? <laughs> right. Very quickly. The most common form is digital audio storage medium are the CD, DVD, uh, which is actually dying already. Okay, CD, DVD is very hard to find now. The DAT, or well, DAT, okay, that is also that is also uh, extinct. So now you have your hard disk, your SD cards, your thumb drives, etc. Okay, you have your solid state drives and all that. Okay, now I mentioned earlier CD quality. The CD standard is actually defined as 16 bits, 44.1 kilohertz. Now the CD audio standard. It was actually a standard that was established and set in the 80s really. So actually this is quite old already. Lah, right? Now our high resolution audio on DVD and all that, on uh, Blu-ray, all that is gone way beyond this uh, standard already. Okay? And even some of the streaming platforms can go with high resolution audio. Now, whenever you're dealing with digital, this is very important. Okay? You have to avoid digital distortion at all costs. Whenever you see red, all right, on your digital meters or input meters, that's already a warning sign. That's bad. Okay, see a red light flashing, it's immediately telling you it's bad. It's not like analog. You know? Sometimes in analog, you can overdrive, you can drive an analog uh, device, and then you get a bit of that distortion, and it's like okay, cool, right? But in digital, when you drive it into distortion, right, uh, it's an immediate and a very nasty sound. Right, the worst you get is you get a click like You get the little digital pop or a click or something like that. The worst, if it's a long-term thing, you be get the digital distortion. Okay, so avoid that at all costs. Now, digital audio interfaces. Audio interfaces here it does not mean your audio interface, your hardware, your focus rod, your presonus, and all that stuff. Here, audio interfaces here are referring to the types of interface formats. Okay, like how you interface a device with another uh, one digital device with another, another digital device, okay? So these are usually developed by different parties, right? different manufacturers, different companies, they develop all these. So it's important to know because a lot of the devices that you buy, your audio interfaces will have these uh, as they are usually, usually as an additional expansion option. Uh. So these include, right, the 
ADAT, okay? ADAT stands for Alasis Digital Audio Tape, and this uses uh, either the optical cable, right? You use an optical cable or uses the light pipe. Okay, now, you have the AES slash EBU. This is short for Audio Engineering Society European Broadcasting Union. This is transmitted over an XLR cable, okay? Exactly the same XLR cable you use for using mic signals. It's the exact same one you can use for sending uh, digital signals as well. Right? If someone someone tells you and say that, hey, XLR cable can only send analog, tell them wrong. It can send digital signals as well. Then we have with a lot of consumer units, sometimes maybe you know your DVD or Blu-ray player or some of the devices. Very common you have this, this is what we call the SP diff or speed diff. Some people pronounce it that way. So it's short for Sony. Philips Digital Interface Format. SPD is much more common on consumer products. That's why that's why you, that I mentioned you, know, CD players, DVD players, Blu-ray players. Sometimes you will find an SPD connection. So they can be either in the RCA uh, cable, right? So RCA, the the yellow and the uh, yellow, white and white and red type of cables, right? The topic of interfaces interconnects. I'll talk about it in a later subject as well. Uh. Or they can also be same with ADAT using the optical cable, right? So these are the ones that you will very commonly encounter. Now there are more. You have also TDIF, Tascam Digital Interface Format. This is a uh, format that is proprietary towards Tascam. La. So it's Tascam devices, Tascam recorders, you know, they have their hard disk recorders, they have the Tascam digital mixers, and they use a 25 pin D sub, okay? So it's like a, your old printer cable. I don't know if you all have ever seen a printer cable. Uh, similar, okay? The D-sub connector. And now we're going into much more modern uh, current. What we have, we have MADI, all right? So MADI stands for Multi-Channel Audio Digital Interface. MADI will run on either coaxial cable, so um, coaxial cables, or also on fiber optic cables. So MADI is um, very much used in the live sound, is very much used in uh, installation sound because you can carry from 32, depending on the sampling rate and the, and the resolution, you can carry up to 56 channels of audio and uh, we are increasingly seeing more use of MADI in studios as well, okay? right. but previously it's more using live sound and installation. Now, even more advanced currently, right? have you heard of Dante? Dante is Digital Audio Network through Ethernet. So this is actually the latest protocol. So a Dante was developed um, so that you can transmit audio through Ethernet. So that's using your Cat5, your Cat6 cables. And uh, I have to go back and research if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, with Dante, you can go up to 128 channels with possibility of uh, as you know as the as the cat cables maybe they go to cat 7 cat 8 in the future better bandwidth and everything you are looking at you know possibly hundreds of channels of audio just on one single cat 5 la, right you can imagine the amount of savings and uh, and the ease of installation where you just one cat 5 cable instead of like a snake cable <laughs> with like you know that weighs like so very very heavy snake analog snake cable you see so that's why digital is offers so many other benefits. Okay, now, naturally as well, any kind of your digital bus, any kind of your interconnection, la, for example, your Firewire, your USB, your Thunderbolt, PCI, also carries digital audio, la, okay, right? But so these are the most common ones. Important to know because the devices that you buy, that you have, are going to have all of these. And in the future, you will see a lot more of Maddie and Dante to come. Last one on this, common sampling rates. So for general knowledge, sampling rate of 8 kHz, 8000 Hz, where it's used for telephone, old telephony, and it's, it's adequate for human speech. So if you have a sampling rate of 8 kHz, 8000 Hz, that's enough to cover human speech, lah, for human speech intelligibility, so that we can hear, right? If we can hear up to 4K, okay, you can understand someone talking to you, lah, okay? Right? Below that, then it'll be hard. This sounds more muffled already. Uh, you also have uh, 11.025 kilohertz. You have also a 22.05 kilohertz. This is for sometimes lower quality PCM and uh, uh, MPEG audio. But increasingly now, as bandwidth increases, right, you will see less and less of all this. 44.1 kilohertz, okay, uh, is the uh, audio CD standard, as I mentioned earlier. Now, 44.1 is actually a very weird number. Now, it's not a very nice round number. Um, the reason why it's also the it's it's also commonly used with uh, 
Wow, VCD, SVCD, <laughs> MP3, okay? Right, maybe I should update that. Lah. I should take away VCD. Some of you don't even know what a VCD is. So why 44.1? Okay, it was because it was adapted from this device, which is called the PCM adapter, right? You know, using PAL, you have video formats, such as PAL, NTSC, and all that. So the calculation that they got, right, is 294 lines by 3 samples by 50 frames per second. So you get this very weird number of 44,100. It's because of the limitation of the, um, the devices, the video devices of, of the early, early, early days. Lah, okay? That's why you end up with that. So now, commonly, we have 48 kilohertz, right? 48,000 hertz. This is digital uh, sound used for uh, DV, digital TV, DVD, that, Blu-ray, films, and professional audio, right? I encourage you to try to record at 48K lah nowadays uh, at least lah, right? So for a little bit of um, general knowledge, 50K was the first commercial digital rec audio recorders in the late 70s from 3M and Soundstream. And now we move on to higher resolution. You have 96K and 192K, right? Uh, in fact, actually now we have moved up to 384K already. We already have 384K sampling rate. So this is for DVD audio, Blu-ray, uh, audio tracks, HD, DVD, and, and uh, so on and so forth. Lah, right? So all high-res is 96K and onwards already. Now, there's actually one more format which uses a sampling rate of 2,822,400 Hz. That's 2.8 MHz sampling rate. That's way higher than... okay any of these uh, these formats. Uh, it was used on the SACD format, Super Audio uh, CD, all right? Which is dead also, okay? Okay, but this uses a one bit, it's not 24 bit, it uses a one bit Sigma Delta modulation process known as Direct Stream Digital, DSD. DSD is still around, right? Some devices are, you know, more in the mastering, maybe in the mastering world, still use DSD uh, encoders. This is very, very high resolution and high quality audio. You know, it's not popular. It has not taken off in a commercial, commercial, uh, commercial sense, lah, right? Because of the limitations, and then you have to convert. You know, everybody will need to convert their formats and their and their catalog into the DST format. So it takes time and it's not worth it. If there's no market for it, right? Usually not worth it, lah, Right? Companies and labels are not really interested to invest so much, lah. But DSD is actually still around. And it's also co-developed by Sony and Philips. All right, so that's the uh, introduction to digital audio. La. So you know your uh, digital audio formats, your audio uh, interface uh, formats, your input importance, all those technical terms that I showed you earlier. If you forget all of that, that's fine. Just remember, okay, two things you need to remember. Always be aware of your bit depth and sampling rate. That's all, okay? Right, so I'll see you in the next uh, module. Thank you.